My name is Erwin Chemerinsky. I'm Dean and Professor of Law at the University of California Berkeley School of Law. The last term of the Supreme Court was momentous. I don't think it's hyperbole to say there's a momentous term in my lifetime. Historically, I think the only term that's analogous was 1937, when the Supreme Court overruled 40 years of precedence that limited the ability of Congress and states to enact progressive legislation safeguarding workers and consumers. In September 2020, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. In October 2020, Justice Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed to replace her. At that time, I made two predictions about the new Supreme Court. First, we would see a lot more 6-3 decisions. Simple arithmetic explains why. There are six conservative justices, all appointed by Republican presidents, and three liberal justices appointed by Democratic presidents. This is a new development. Until recently, there were liberal justices appointed by Republican presidents. Think of John Paul Stevens or David Souter. There were conservative justices appointed by Democratic presidents. Think of Byron White, or before that, Felix Frankfurter. My other prediction is we would see many fewer 5-4 decisions with the liberal justice in the majority. Again, simple arithmetic explains why. When Justice Ginsburg was on the court, there were four liberal justices. They only need to get one additional vote to be a majority. Now the three liberal justices need two on a court with so many staunch conservatives. This past term, October term 2021, showed both of those prophecies came true. The Supreme Court decided 60 cases with signed opinions after briefing and oral argument. 19 of them were 6-3 decisions, almost a third. There were another nine 5-4 decisions. There were very few 5-4 decisions where the liberals were in the majority, especially in what we regard as the major cases. It's worth taking a moment to talk about how did we get here? Between 1960 and 2020, there were 32 years with a Republican president and 28 years with a Democratic president, almost even. But between 1960 and 2020, Republican presidents picked 15 Supreme Court justices, whereas Democratic presidents picked only eight Supreme Court justices. Or to put this another way, President Donald Trump picked four justices, three justices in his four years in the White House. But the last three Democratic presidents, Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama, served a combined 20 years in the White House. And in those 20 years, they picked only four justices. What I'd like to do in this hour is review the major cases from this momentous term and talk about what they're likely to mean. I've listed the topics in alphabetical order and prepared a handout that lists the cases in the order in which I'll discuss them. The place to begin, both alphabetically and in terms of social importance, is with regard to abortion. In the case is Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health. It involves Mississippi law that prohibited abortion to the 15th week of pregnancy. In Roe versus Wade in 1973, the Supreme Court ruled that states cannot prohibit abortions prior to viability. In Planned Parenthood versus Casey in 1992, the court said it was reaffirming the essential holding of Roe that states can't prohibit abortions prior to viability. What's interesting with regard to the political shift is that Roe was a seven to two decision. The majority opinion was written by Justice Harry Blackmun, who had been put on the Supreme Court by President Richard Nixon. Planned Parenthood versus Casey was five to four, but all five justices the majority who reaffirmed Roe had been appointed by Republican presidents. Harry Blackman by President Richard Nixon, John Paul Stevens by President Gerald Ford, Sandra Day O'Connor and Anthony Kennedy by President Ronald Reagan, David Souter by President George H.W. Bush. In Dobbs versus Jackson's Health, the Supreme Court 
overruled Roe versus Wade in Planned Parenthood versus Casey. 